at the moment not used, but we have some interesting things for us. Um, and it can vibrate. And the vibration is used in, uh, in our program. Um, I can show you a small demonstration of how this works. And in fact, I think I have it prepared. But I don't know if, if this is... Let's try to use my Wiimote to show it. Um, and let's use a different Wiimote for, uh, for testing it. So let's enable the mouse. Let's see if I can do this and I can do this. And then let's take another Wiimote. Um, and then first, I guess, press this and press this. No, not on this one. Um, where is my mouse? And that is. So this, this is now used for my interface. Let's stop this one. This is now the second one. It is connected. And now you can see, for instance, um, my buttons. This is all the buttons I can press. Um, you can see that the motion, motion sensor, so if I move in this direction, you see one going, well, I cannot keep the other one still, but if I move like this, you can see one going, and if I move like this, you can see the other going. Uh, for infrared, I don't know if there's any infrared light source here, no. So let's, uh, let's take my infrared sensor bar, put it somewhere, or give it to someone in the audience. Eh? Involve the audience, very important. Um, and normally you should see the, the two LEDs and if you move or if you go further away it becomes smaller and if you turn it, it changes. So you have an infrared camera and that's what it does. It just finds infrared sources. Um, I can show you the nun nunchuck, but it's not used for our purpose, but the nunchuck looks like this. Like... like this and you can connect it to it and also these buttons you can uh, but we don't use it for our purpose um, and that's a little bit it so that's how the the remote works now back to the presentation um, so I just showed you this it communicates via Bluetooth so my laptop has a Bluetooth device in it and that's how it works so it doesn't use infrared for communication even though people think that the sensor bar, because it has a cable, it communicates, but it's just power. And that's why my sensor bar here, it's just a wireless sensor bar, just because it doesn't need power, because it has batteries. So that's why it works. Um, <clears throat> now, the goal of the project was initially to um, create something that would work out of the box without anything you have to configure for giving presentations. But, of course, you can do other things with it as well. And so, after the initial thoughts we had, we, well, I changed it also a little bit to also be used as a remote control um, for, um, yeah, using it for a multimedia player, a media center, everything where 12 buttons would be enough to, to do something with it. And so instead of, of just giving presentations, maybe the name is wrong, maybe we should change the name in, in Wii Control or something like that, so that, it, that, that people don't think it's only for presentations. Um, okay. So why would you use a Wiimote for that? You can buy something that works in a, sh in a shop, and uh, why, why use a Wiimote? Well, a Wiimote is pretty cheap. Even you get, you get no, um, fake ones, not from Nintendo, for, for 30 euros. So that's cheaper than most of these devices for giving presentations. And for that price, you get lots of, lots of things that I talked to you about, the things that most of these devices don't do. And there are some other reasons why, why you would use it. This is a known interface. I bought one of these devices um, that was also Bluetooth, that also had uh, buttons to, to, to forward. But the problem was I couldn't make it work under Linux because it used the proprietary protocol. And uh, yeah, I bought it and it was, I think it was 30 euros or 40 euros on eBay. 
but I couldn't use it, so it <laughs> made no sense. Uh, and that's why I thought, why can't I use these devices? It's Bluetooth as well, and it has also has buttons. Um, it fits well in your hand. The device that I bought, I didn't bring it with me, but it was like a, a, a credit card, a business card size. The thing is, it's, it's just a business card. So I, every time you have to press a key to go forward, it's every minute or every two minutes, you have to look for where is this, where is this button. While this fits much nicer in your hand, you don't have to keep it in an, in an awkward position to just forward. And yeah, it's made, it's, it's made to, to fit in your hand. It's also reliable. At Linux Stack, we tested this in a, in a um, uh, how do you say that? In, in the Linux Stack, you have a big hall with all the vendors. And we set up this. It was the first time we tested this. And I was walking through the complete uh, conference hall with all the boots, with all the people. I think there were 500 or more people inside with all Bluetooth devices, all with wireless, uh, multiple uh, access points. I even went outside of the room, outside of the hall. In, in the neighboring halls, and it would still work. So, um, Bluetooth is, is apparently capable, well capable enough to be used even with a complete, uh, with a complete, um, yeah, audience listening with all Bluetooth devices. Um, so reliable, and it's to impress the audience. I, I'm sure you were all impressed when I took it out of the bag. <laughs> um, and everyone has one. Maybe, but even then, you, you know one, someone who has one to, to test it with, so there are plenty of those around. Uh, I have 10 of these. <laughs> Makes no sense, but I, it's for the project, of course. Um, now, we encountered a few problems, and one of the, the, the biggest problems was the library, the choice of libraries. There are many libraries. Uh, none of them implement everything. Um, that was our first problem. Um, the second problem was that I prefer to program in Python because I'm not a very skilled C programmer. Uh, and the, the thing is, there are not that many Python bindings and none of them are, are, are very good. I mean, the, the C, by, the, the C uh, functions and how you use the C, C uh, implementation is much, much better than how you use the, the Python implementation. Um, so, we had to choose one and we chose libv mode. And I'm, I'm still not sure if it was the right decision, but none of these are maintained. And uh, recently when there was an, um, Nintendo changed something in the new design, actually they, they, they uh, sold uh, an extension. Um, it's called the Wii, Mo Wii Motion Plus. And when they, when they sold these, the author of CWIID uh, changed started to maintain it again, their library, and so maybe we should have used CWIID. I don't know. It's a, it's a much bigger pro project, and the initial problems I had with it, that I couldn't compile it on CentOS. Um, so, and, and it was because there were some older libraries on CentOS where it wouldn't compile it. So the choice for libv mode was also based on the fact that you didn't need to have as many dependencies, which makes it easier for people to compile. Um, and even libv mode has some problems. It also is missing certain things like device scanning is not implemented. We have to implement it ourselves. Um, infrared coordinates doesn't work. Uh, we can read out information for infrared, but transforming that into s something that you can use to, to uh, instruct a mouse is very, very hard. Yeah. I'm still looking for someone smarter than me to help me with that. Um, um, speaker, you cannot use the speaker with the, the library, so we probably have to implement that ourselves as well. And there are a few bugs that I will talk about later. Um, and I think I took the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when, yeah when I switched with my... Okay, doesn't matter. Um, then the second problem was the C programming itself. Um, it took me, I think, 10 times longer to implement what I have now than if I would have had proper Python libraries. Um, yeah, it feels like typing with six fingers cut off. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> um, it also excludes potential contributors. I mean, if you expect everyone to know C that wants to contribute, I mean, how many people that do presentations know C? then you already have a very limited scope. So it's, it's sad that we can't use a, a scripting language for this. Um, 
Um, the thing is also, if we would have gone for Python, the, the WMD that we used before, which was the, the one of the prototypes we had, there the in infrared worked, and it also would work reliably, but uh, I'm, I'm too stupid to, to implement that in C with the li Python libraries uh, next to me, with the Python source code next to me. So um, it's, it's very hard to do it in C because it's, it's a lot of things you have to do and maybe, maybe I did everything right when I converted it, but I still couldn't make it work. So maybe I made, made a problem that I wasn't aware of. And also it keeps the dependencies down. If you have to have Python, then you have to have both the C libraries and the Python bind bindings and the right versions. And so it makes it a little bit, bit more complicated. So f I have a, I have, a, I don't know exactly. I think it's good that we did it because it, it helped us start very quickly, but now I think it's slowing us down. So f I don't know. And the third thing was, um, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. You should be able to start it and it would work. But of course, the device is not made to, to, for giving presentations. So the buttons have a meaning, but it doesn't, it doesn't state what these meanings are. Um, the buttons, you can also have key combinations or something like that, but it, you have to know that in advance to be able to use it. And even I, when we implemented it, I changed the key combinations to make it easier for other people, but of course I was still thinking about the old combination, so I frequently make a mistake because I, I've implemented it three times with different key combinations. So I think we now have a good set of key combinations for doing certain things, but uh, yeah, the device was never made for this, so you need a minimum of information. And even yesterday I was showing it off, and when I'm showing it off, people are very interested to know what it can do and are very excited. But if I would leave it there and people take it and they, they start doing this, they expect something to happen, which it doesn't, of course. So then people say it's broken and I could overhear all these things while I was sitting there and I said, hmm, that's not good. So you need a minimum of information and you need someone to show it off bef to, to get people excited, otherwise it wouldn't work. Um, um, yeah, it should work out of the box, as I said, and it should also prevent any type of incident. And to uh, explain you this, I, uh, I will show you a few of the things I've learned by giving presentations with this device, with the prototypes we made and what we learned of it. Um, and so the first incident I had was at um, NLLGG. Um, we, did, we had a CentOS meeting there, um, and this was the first time I really used it as in, in public. And it was my WMD prototype written in Python. And my embarrass the embarrassment was not that big, but I will explain you why. Um, everybody was excited when they, when they saw it, and then I moved on to the presentation itself. And suddenly, everybody was looking very weird, and I was thinking, what, what happened? What happened? And when I looked behind me, I was on the wrong slide. I was going backwards. And the reason why is um, there is the, the B key. Uh, this is a key underneath. Now it doesn't do anything, but it used to be the backward key. And it's very easy to, to, to I accidentally hit it. If you, you're walking around like this, you can, you can accidentally hit it and other things. Uh, so I was accidentally hitting the B key and it went back without me noticing it. So this sh we should prevent, of course. And so the, the, future, uh, well, the solution was very easy. Uh, make the B key not do anything. And in fact, if you don't have it do anything, then maybe you could use it as some kind of a shift key that in combination with this key and another key, it does something. And that makes sense. And even then, if you do that, instead of only 12 keys, you have 22 keys. Um, so thanks to this key and thanks to the fact that I accidentally hit it, now I have 22 keys that I can use in combination. Um, so and then the, the second incident I had was at Frostcon last year. Um, now I'm thinking, what did I do wrong there? Ah, I remember. Um, the thing was, yeah, it's on the next slide, but I cannot show it yet. So uh, what did I do wrong? Um, we had this implementation where the infrared camera worked, and uh, so you could move your mouse by just pointing. But of course, if you do a presentation or you're showing it off, there are other infrared sources around you. And in this case, I was lucky because this is all TL lights, or so, I don't know if this is in English, but these don't uh, send out any infrared. So, but if you're in, in another room with infrared sources, then if you're just walking around, the mouse pointer would move. Um, so 
leaving the infrared on just to be able to point is not a good idea. That was what I learned there. And so the, the fact that I, it was not on a presentation made it less em embarrassing, but it still, it was, uh, it was something that we learned. So um, don't leave the, mo the, the camera, the infrared camera um, open or don't, don't do anything until you want to do something. And so the same is, is true for if you use it for tilting. If you want to enable the tilting, you have to press B and A together. And then you can you can move your mouse, but I don't see it. What happened? Maybe it switched again. I don't know. Let's check. No. It was of course not very smart of me to have both of them, of both of my uh, things running. So maybe I should stop it. Let's. I know that the reason is that my mouse was not visible because um, in Open Office, I think in full screen, it doesn't show it except maybe in certain cases. You see, ah, there it is. So I don't know exactly. But so A and B together enables it or disables it. So you have some more control over when you want to enable and disable it. Even better, if you enable it, then you can also remap the keys you have. So you can then remap, in this case, minus and plus to, um, well, f have it function as a mouse mouse keys, mouse buttons. So in this case, I can do things by, well, I don't know if it would work here, but I can press press stuff by using AM, uh, press and minus. So you would also be able to map those key with different meanings. And um, so incident three was in Buenos Aires, where, um, well, what, what happened there was that, um, I'm thinking this is the wrong, yeah. Uh, the problem was here that I was giving a presentation and I, I, well, when I started, I put my laptop into to the socket and I think I every, thought everything was right, but because I was going to presentations myself, I had to put the volume down. And during the presentations, suddenly everything was gone and everybody was looking around and I didn't know what was happening myself, but someone in the front said that my laptop stopped working because my battery was down. And I didn't hear it because I had my sound, my volume to the lowest, so I, I didn't know that yeah, I, I, I should be able to prevent it. And it was a full room, it was, the, it was a keynote, <laughs> so that was very, very embarrassing. And uh, we, we had to first fix the fact that I didn't have electricity, so that took a while before they found out why the electricity wasn't working. And then, uh, yeah, then... Uh, so the thing is, what could I do? What, how could I prevent this? And that's when it hit me. We should probably have used the speaker for this and let my computer tell the speaker, tell me that my laptop is down by maybe playing a voice. I could make it shake, but then, of course, the, it, what does it mean if it shakes? But if the speaker s softly says, your battery is low, then, of course, you can still do something about it before you're in an embarrassment. So that was something I, I, I learned there. And then there was another thing, and it was during a presentation at a customer, that I learned that um, something you can easily prevent is the fact that your screensaver starts. Um, and uh, yeah, everybody has seen this, eh, that during a presentation, the screensaver, it's easy. If you start represent, then the screensaver is disabled. If you stop represent, the screensaver is enabled again. So it's not that hard to do that. Um, so if we look at the program itself, there are some things that are very important to make it work out of the box and make it, well, keep it as simple as possible for people to use. Um, the most important one is that you don't need any drivers. You would think that for something like this you needed a driver to instruct the hardware to do something, but um, the way we do it, you don't need any hardware drivers or any X drivers. The way we do it is we have an X client, we present, connect to the X server, get information from the Bluetooth and just uh, act as if someone is moving the mouse pointer or is sending key shortcuts to, 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 to clients. So we have just have this client in the background um, and it just does that for you. No drivers involved, uh, nothing needed at all. Um, there is no need for root access because this works as a user. So even if you do not have root access to your own system, um, you can still use it as long as Bluetooth is working, of course. Um, it works with any Bluetooth dongle, and I wanted to make sure to be able to say that um, with certainty. I bought 
I, I went to the media market and I bought all the Bluetooth devices they had. And I, I had six different Bluetooth devices. I still have them. I still, still have five of them because I had to bring one back. One didn't work. Don't know if it was broken or... It was the biggest one. It was, it was a, the ugliest thing of the lot. So I, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I didn't mind to return it. But I now have five different brands. And all of them are commodity hardware and they all work. I think they all use the same chipset or something. I don't really know. Uh, it just works. So that's nice. In Linux, you don't have to care. You just buy the cheapest one. They're 10 euros. If you don't have Bluetooth in your laptop or in your device, it's just 10 euros and you can connect it. It's USB piece. Um, also, what was important is you, that you were able to use the mouse even when you don't have infrared. Well, the current implementation doesn't have infrared support, but at least if you don't have a sensor bar, you can also move your mouse pointer. And in the future, we hope to be able to use infrared because it's much more convenient. Um, it should support every application, eventually. Uh, at the moment, I've done all the applications I have available to me, but of course, people use different stuff, so maybe we should also um, make it easier for people to add key shortcuts for their applications. Um, and it's easy to debug. You can add multiple V options to the application. You can see exactly why it does something or why it's not working. So it should be easy for someone, if it doesn't work, to find out why that is. Um, before I uh, continue with how it works, let me show you um, the functionality, functionality that is uh, implemented. We have automatic device scanning so that you don't have to know your Bluetooth address of your remote in advance. You just have to press one and two. Um, we have mappings for about 25 applications. I, I didn't count them. I think it's something like that. Um, you can use your mouse by tilting. And I have to demonstrate it a little bit. Um, well, let me... Do, 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 do. Let me go to the other workspace. Tilting means that you have, um, you can see that it, if you go like this and you go like this, it knows that you're making this movement. And um, if you go forward and backwards, it also knows that you're making this movement. And that's how it works right now. So it's a little bit inconvenient because people usually do this if they want to go left and right. And actually, you should do this. And it takes some time to get used to, to, and even I still have a problem to get it right. Also, because if you don't want the mouse pointer to move, you have to keep it still. And I'm not trying to keep it still, but you see that it's still moving. So if I put it down, normally it should stay, well, it's, you see, even then it's still a little bit moving because it was, uh, it's round, and so it's, it's, so it's very difficult to, to use it like that. Um, one of the things that we want to do is uh, implement something like you have in digital cameras, the stabilization. So if you move it a little bit, it doesn't work. But if you move it a little bit more, then, it, then, then it's taken into account. So if we would implement that, then it would be easier to... Um, but we have to test this. Uh, this is something that I would really like to have for the tilting. Um, the rumbling of, or vibration... Um, you can make it vibrate every, for instance, if you have a presentation of 50 minutes, that, that at every 10 minutes it vibrates to tell you that you how much time you have spent or how much time you have left. In fact, I started this application today without these options. So I cannot show it to you now, but I will show it to you later. Um, and the LEDs would then indicate how much time you have left. Of course, because I'm playing with it, I didn't start it with that option. I will show you that. It disables the screen saver and it also has X-Init integration. I'm using these devices at home to instruct my um, TV program. I, we have a, a Linux computer with TV time on it. If you boot it, it starts automatically the TV. And if you stop the machine, well, if you, if you log out, it will automatically log out and it, it will disconnect. And we use remotes to, to be able to, uh, to change channels and stuff like that. And the X-Init integration is nice because then you don't have to start the application in advance. You don't need a keyboard and a mouse in front of your computer in the living room. You just have the PC and this started when you start X. So the X-Init integration, not by default for presentations, but for, for remote control, it's nice to have it start when X is started. How does it really work? Well. It scans for remote devices, then connects with the first one it finds. 
that's something we can improve as well. Um, it follows the mouse focus. So when I'm going through applications, it follows which application has the focus and then tries to find the name of that application. And if it finds the name of, the appli of this application, then it automatically finds the mapping inside of the program, which says if you then press A on that application, you need to do this. Or if you, do, if, if you press uh, plus in that application, you need to make the volume louder, or you have, to, um, you have to zoom in, or something like that. So all these mappings change with the application that has the focus. And that is something that we only thought of later, because at the beginning when we implemented it, you had to say, I'm going to use this with OpenOffice in advance. And then it would only work for OpenOffice. But of course, this is much more flexible. Um, the only problem is finding application names. Uh, there are a few applications that have a problem when you go into full screen. It's Videoland Client and, and QIV that have a problem because they don't give their window a name. And so I cannot say go back out of full screen. I cannot send any keys to it because it doesn't have a name, the application. So I don't know which keys to send. And that's something we have to fix in those applications. But um, or maybe there is another way to find, some, find more information about it. And because it's full screen, it's using the root window. And so I don't know which application owns this window. So I cannot find the parent window that, that owns it or something like that. Um, what does it do at this moment? Well, if you would start it correctly, it, it would uh, rumble and change the LEDs. And you will see you would see how it continues, how much time you have left. And in mouse mode, you can change the mouse pointer or the buttons. Uh, this is how you can start it. And we recently changed it a little bit that instead of only being able to give one Bluetooth address, if you want to make sure that only you can connect with your device, we changed it to be able to give more than one Bluetooth device. And the reason for this is, at Froscon, we made a live CD with the application enabled, but we wanted to make sure that people couldn't tamper with our system by bringing a remote during the presentation and at the beginning started to take over the screen by, by pressing one and two. But we had a bunch of remotes and we wanted to hand out remotes without having to know, oh, in this room we hard-coded this Bluetooth address. So what we wanted to have is that we could, for all the, for the 10 remotes that I have, we wanted to have it start with only those 10 Bluetooth addresses. And in that way we would make sure that uh, only one of our devices would be connecting to, to our application. And also at your home, imagine that your neighbors ha also have a Wii, and at the same time that you start your machine, or you have your TV running and continuously scanning, if your neighbor start, presses one or two to connect to, the Wii, to, to his own Wii, then of course he's connecting to your TV maybe, and that's what you want to prevent. So having an, the ability to have more than one Bluetooth address helps you to make sure that only your Wii modes would work. Maybe in the future we could, we could uh, have it in, in a learning mode where it would write down all the, the Bluetooth addresses you connected it with and only connect to those if you don't specify it. That would be nice as well. Um, infrared is to enable infrared, which is not yet implemented. The minus L is what I forgot to give. Uh, normally you give minus L 50 or something. If you have a one hour presentation, you want to have 50 minutes for giving the presentation and 10 minutes for maybe uh, questions. Um, minus R is to make it reconnect if it disconnects for whatever reason. Um, tilting is to enable the tilting sensors. And that's it actually. So there's not much to it. Even if you don't give any option, it works like I'm doing. <laughs> but there are some things missing. And the things missing are, well, the infrared control. That's something I mentioned now a few times. We don't have separate config files. It would be nice if we would have separate config files so that you could make it work on your system with uh, your application without changing the source code. It makes, it makes sense. But it's a little bit problematic for me to do it in C. And not only that, we could do it in C very simply for what we're doing now. But we want to do some other things that we haven't implemented yet. And this, the config file uh, syntax that we want to implement should make sure that everything is possible even in the future. Like, I would, want, I would like to have uh, movements or gestures implemented so that I could say next slide or previous slide. Um, something like that, of course, we have to think about how we would 
um, how we would r read out these gestures and if everybody is making the same gesture and stuff like that, if you make a small O to go back or you make a big O to go back, we have to, we have to somehow read that out and maybe we have to make templates, templates for these all different gestures and then just have the name of the gesture in the config file, something like that. Um, so for gestures, we still have to think about how to do that. Geert Tietger already made an implementation where something um, yeah, is uh, completely at the left, at the back. <laughs> he already did something with gestures, but we still have to, we still have to integrate it um, in C. Um, also for window manager events, at, this, at the moment it sends keys that are mapped to window managers. And in the future we would like, instead of sending keys, to instruct the window manager, we would like to send window manager events if that's possible, and so that it would work with any window manager despite what keys you have mapped. Uh, that's important as well. Um, um, and I forgot what I meant with detect window manager for... Ah, yes. Uh, in the case we cannot do that, in case we cannot send window manager events or in case there are window managers that uh, don't follow these window manager events, we could still implement the detection of what window manager do you have and then send the, the keys that are mapped by default. In that case, it would still work for the default installations of certain window managers. Um, also, one thing we learned by having these devices uh, being used for a TV is that if you, it, it, it's, once it is connected, it stays connected. And the problem is Bluetooth is very, very energy wasting, so it drains your battery very, very quickly. I think if you have full batteries and you keep it connected, I think it's two days and then they're flat. And if you keep, in our case, if we keep kept our, um, our uh, TV running, but we just um, shut down the beamer, then it, of course we had this problem that we, of course I have 10 of these, so I always have one that is still has batteries, but in a normal home, maybe you have only one or two, then of course it's, it's, it's more of a problem. So we would like to implement something that after some idle time, it, it disconnects, and then if you press a key, it would reconnect and automatically send that key as well. I don't know if it's possible, the Wii seems to do, seems to do this. I don't know exactly how it does it. It probably does not disconnect completely, or I don't know really how it does it, but we have to look how to do it ourselves. And that would help, of course, because then it doesn't matter if it's disconnected or not. You would just send the game the key and it, it would work. For presentations, this is not a problem, because I, yeah, yeah, I've never given a presentation that took 48 hours. But it would be a boring presentation, probably, but normally you press a key every once in a while, so even if it would, um, if, it would if you say an idle time of 30 by default, or 30 minutes, or, or 15 minutes, one slide, 15 minutes, it's a long time, so uh, in that case it would still, you, sh you would just have to reconnect, and then it still would work. And also, the, the represent, I already said that, um, it's, this, it's, it's the wrong name for the things we're doing now with it, so maybe, Maybe we have to have two binaries, one that's called we control and one that is called um, uh, we present, in the sense that um, some of the options don't make sense f as a we control, like the timeout, the fact that you, you can set your time makes no sense for a remote control for a TV. It would be vibrating every 10 minutes, makes no sense. So some of the options could be implied instead of uh, configurable. And then if you run it like we present, it would do that. And if you run it as we control, it would not do that. Makes sense. Um, we have some other uh, wish list items. One of the things is if it finds more than one device and you don't give a Bluetooth address, it would connect with the first one it finds. And we wanted to implement something that would look out for the, the nearest Bluetooth device or the one with the strongest signal. We could do both. And based on that, we could take the decision, this is the one that is needs, I need to link with. That would help for people in the audience bringing remotes. But we tried to implement it, and it's not very reliable. I, there was a problem if you started scanning. You, the problem is, if you want to get this information from a Bluetooth device, you first have to connect with it, and then disconnect with it. You cannot get that information just by scanning. The name you can easily get, but everything else not. So, um, I don't know if we still can do it. Um, a solution to this, like I said before, is that we have a, a database with all Bluetooth addresses we already connected with. And that's a little bit how um, 
how Nintendo does it. In fact, you have a, a button, an extra button inside of the battery. It's a red button to, to connect it with the Wii. Maybe we could use that to, to fill the, the, the list of known Bluetooth uh, addresses. One other problem is the lib remote maintenance. Should we take over this library, even if we are not very fluent in C? I don't know. Um, we, we do have, a, I think, five patches for it and still a lot of bugs for it, so I don't know exactly what we need to do with it. Should we go to another library? It shouldn't be that difficult. Just replacing functions or, or the meat of the, the, program, of the, the program is not that uh, different but only the functions need to be changed or maybe something else. I don't know. Sound is something that is nice to have, like I said. Maybe if the presentation is over, it could say da 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 da, -da or something. Um, or to say that you're in, in certain events that should not happen, maybe like the battery that it's, that's going down, or the batteries of your device that are being drained. Maybe it could say remote batteries are going down, something like that. Um, well, monitor computer battery, I'm doing that right now, but apparently I think it's a bug in libremote that I cannot read out new information. So I can, f if I read it out, if I s connect and I read it out, I get the information at that time. But if I read it out afterwards, I get always the same information even though my battery is going down. So I don't exactly know what's wrong with libremote. Um, Make keys repeat. At the moment, if you, if you use, for instance, some of these keys to uh, change the volume, you have to keep pressing it because I disable key presses, repeated key presses. But maybe I should only disable, disable repeated key presses at the beginning until after some time and then repeat the key presses. That would help for uh, changing volume and stuff like that. Um, On-screen writing is a nice one. If we have infrared, we could by pointing to something, we could have like a laser pointer. I press a key and I pound. I could circle something on my presentation without even, yeah. It, it could write something on screen and then slowly removing it again so that like a laser pointer, you can circle something and it would show. You could write. And if we have something like this, we could use it for the GIMP. Because now the GIMP, using this for the GIMP is, is not useful. You can only send key presses. But once you can move your mouse pointer in a in a good fashion, then you can just by clicking right something or you can paint on your wall and imagine if you have a beamer, you can, you can have kids painting on your wall, it would be nice. And clicking on other stuff and then painting with, with some other with a stamp or something like that, that would be very nice to have. Um, so infrared would be nice to have for different reasons and uh, laser pointer capabilities would be nice to have for giving presentations. And then what I definitely need are more distribution packages. Uh, I got someone today uh, sending, well, making a Ubuntu package for me. Um, but we need more of that. I don't know exactly what the problem is. I know that lib remote, um, you can compile it in two different ways. And I know in, in Fedora, it's, I think it's compiled the wrong way. I don't know. It's, it's compiled correctly with non-blocking mode? OK, then it's correct. But I don't know why we present is still not in, in Fedora. And in, in Ubuntu, both of them are missing, both lib remote and, and we present. Um, so we're now trying to push distributions to, to include it as well. That, that is one of the, the ways to make it simple for users to, to be able to use it. Um, the known bugs. Uh, lib remote has a few known bugs. If I press power off, it would loop inside the library, so that's really, really bad. I want to have, if you just click power off button, that it would just disconnect. Um, the battery status, I, it, pr it doesn't seem to update it, so that's a problem as well. The infrared only works when X ah, yes. um, I have to enable acceleration sensors to get infrared working. That's obviously a bug in, uh, in um, lib remote. And then there is a lot of missing functionality, like I said before, the scanning for devices, infrared, a mapping of, of, of well, imp well, interpreting the, the, the infrared data. And there is one bug in we present at the moment, which is not really critical, but for people that use Videolan client, it's, it's a big problem. QIV is not that, not, not that known, I think. It's a, it's a project that's very old and don't know if a lot of people still use it. Hmm? The QIV? Yeah, but I think it's still betas. I don't think they released a new stable at the beta. I've, yeah. Ah, that's nice. 
You are a QIV developer? No, I'm <laughs> Ah, very well. Okay, so I look, should look into it. Maybe this problem is solved in the new versions, I don't know. But at least I can send it somewhere now. <laughs> I thought it was unmaintained. Um, the future of the project. Well, I want to promote this a little bit. And for what we did at Froscon, which was, uh, I already explained it a little bit, we, in every conference room there were computers from the university which we could not reinstall. So we created a live CD with CentOS and with all the latest drivers from EL Repo. Um, and we gave away flyers with instructions of... Um, actually, we have a very good flyer that explains how to use it for... Let me see. Oh. We have a very good flyer that is normally much more, <laughs> much better. I wanted to print them here, but we don't have a printer at the, at the conference. And it explains for uh, giving presentations. It's also on the wiki, on the TDOS wiki or on the TDOS website. You can download the PDF. And uh, this is very important, as I said. Without the instructions, you, you wouldn't know how to use it. So very good instructions are very important. And that's the documentation we gave to presenters at, uh, at Froscon. Um, we have a live CD, as I said. Actually, it was a live USB with uh, everything booting from USB so that it had all the presentation tools and the application on it. Um, and they even used the live USB for the... <laughs> they had this very big screen at the entrance where it would say what the, what the timetable was of all the conferences so that if you would walk in, you could directly see what the next conferences were in each of the rooms, which was very nice. And they were planning to use Ubuntu for it. And in Ubuntu, the Intel driver didn't work, so it wouldn't work, uh, they couldn't use it. Then they tried Fedora because it was a, it was a special device. It was a screen with an, with an integrated computer, so they wanted to use something new to make sure that the, the drivers would work. And they tried Fedora. And with Fedora, the network driver didn't work. And then they, they didn't know what to do, and, and because they have to create a, a bootable USB, they, they asked, can we have one of, of, from, f that, that we're using for the CentOS uh, in, in, the, in the rooms? And they used that one, and it worked. So uh, it was very nice for us, for, for especially for the El Repo people, that we have a proof that it, it, it helped. It helps people even at a big conference like this. Um, we, I, I'm now promoting at conferences. At Froscon we had a boot, now here we have a boot. I would like at FOSDEM as well to have a boot and also to, to hand them out to the different conference rooms so that a way to promote is to, is to have presenters use it during conferences because then people see it in use rather than um, having to come to the boot and it, it goes much quicker. So that's why we're trying to hand out uh, these, these devices for free. We also have Bluetooth dongles that we hand out. You have to return them, of course. Um, so that people can really easily start. And also the USB sticks, we bought a few of them and, and we give them also for people that don't want to mess with their system or just want to, to have it uh, very quickly without, uh, without messing too much. Um, and then, of course, the, the future really depends on the development and um, it depends a little bit on the free time of, of people and I spend a lot of time trying the infrared work, get the infrared working and so uh, I don't know if, if, if it would work without, without anyone else helping there. So if someone feels challenged to do this, feel free to try it <laughs> or get in contact with me. Um, let me see. I don't. I think this was it. So we need your feedback. Um, and this is some more project details. I'm now going to show you a little bit how it works. And for this, I'm going to uh, restart the program. Um, so here you can see. Well, first of all, let me show you this. So this is how it connects. You can see the screen, but wait, wait, wait. This is part of the demonstration. This is now focusing on Xterm. And if I press plus, it makes the, the fonts, it zooms in, as to say. And this is exactly what you need if you want to give a presentation. Usually, if you want to give a demonstration, you have to go back to your computer, find how you can make the, 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 the font bigger. And it works with other terminals as well. So if I go here to, um, I wonder where my uh, GNOME terminal, here, GNOME terminal. 
So in GNOME Terminal, it works the same. You can see below here that it says that it's found a new application, GNOME Terminal, and it also says how it found it. It, it found it by guessing what the parent window ID was and then got the name from the parent ID window. I have five different ways of trying to get the name. I try to get the name from the application on three different ways, and then I try to find the parent window by guessing the name if I cannot find the parent window by following the parent window ID. So that's five different ways. Uh, but it, it works now very well. Um, but even here, so if I have GNOME Terminal, I can also zoom in or zoom out. Well, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem to be working in this case. I don't know exactly why yesterday it worked. I'm not going to look into it right now. Um, but if you start some other applications, um, what could I start that makes sense? Maybe Rhythmbox? So I could, um, let me see, I, normally I, if I start it, let me start a, a song. Then I can go through the songs, now it's, uh, it's random order. Or I can change the sound, so I uh, don't know exactly where the sound is. You, you can't see it, but uh, it doesn't show it. You see there at the top that the sound is now getting... Yeah, you see now I have disabled the sound. Uh, it doesn't show it here in this application. Um, but for a browser, well, I could start Firefox, but I have 150 uh, tabs open. I cannot see my lower... lower uh, maybe it was already open, but I could probably try... Um, you see, it's not that easy. Um, Opera, maybe. Let's see. So if I go to, for instance, here, a website that I have open, or maybe normally, but this is, if I go left and right, you see, I can go through the tops, and normally I can scroll, but I need to have a top that is here, I can scroll by going down over the links, up and down, and if I press um, B and then go down, it's actually moving up and down to the page. Well, yeah, I pressed the wrong button, here we go. So up and down here means going through the page. Um, so I could go to, maybe this one is nice. So uh, it's, yeah, I don't know if it's useful in this case for just, but if you have a demonstration and you want to show a website, then this could work. Um, I think I have something prepared as well. Maybe it was on the other. You can change your, between uh, workspaces. Um, so this was the, the workspace where I had my presentation. On the next one, I had my demonstrations ready. Um, I can go out of full screen. Yeah, I, it's stupid. I don't see my lower part of my screen, so I cannot go to the applications like that. So I have to... Uh, uh, no, not this, this. Yeah, I can see it, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can also go through the applications, but uh, yeah, you cannot go through the applications if they're minimized, so that's what, what's limiting me at the moment. We should have checked the, the, in, the, the configuration of the Beamer before we... <laughs> These are things I cannot do from my represent, of course. But the thing I prepared is, ah no, I didn't have it started. So it's a documentation that I wanted to show. This is a new documentation that you can find on the TDOS website. As you can see, there's TDOS integrated and it contains the most important information of how to connect to it and how the mouse mode works for people that don't know how it works. That's a little bit it. I don't think there is much, you know, there's much more to say about it. Are there any questions? Yes. Did it? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So. Perfect. So that's already good. I, that is two success stories. QIV, QIV is back uh, maintained and now Lip C remote is maintained again. It must be the crisis. It must be the crisis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, as I said, CWIID has um, 
well, it's maintained again because they added the, the remote plus uh, information. For us, it doesn't make a, a big difference. For people that don't know what it really does is, it uh, improves the, the, de the information you get. It gives you much more detailed information about what movement you're doing. Uh, if you have ever played with, with, with the Wii and you played tennis, you know you start playing tennis like this and like this, and in the end you play tennis like this. Of course, that <laughs> if people know that they can roll, they can bowling like this from the from from the seat, or they play tennis like this while seated, then of course the Wii is no longer an exercise device. So what they did is they made they made it possible that now you can see the difference between this and this. So they apparently with the new information you get, you can track. In, in space, what movement you're doing. So you can no longer do something like this if you need to do something like this. And the difference is also visible when you play. Um, if you, I have Wii Sports Resort, and you have games like throwing a basketball and yeah, lots of stuff, and it's really, really much more accurate. So you cannot, you cannot fake it anymore. You really have to, you have to uh, exercise before you can throw all the balls. Um, so that's what the Wii Motion Plus does, but for us it's probably not that useful. Besides, it makes your device a big, much bigger actually, so if you see the difference between this one and this one, then you can see that it is, despite the fact that it has a silicon uh, thing around it, it's, it's a bit different, so uh, I don't know, for us it's probably not that useful. Just like the Wii Fit is not useful for giving presentations. So, <laughs> yeah. I think some people already implemented it, but for games it's much more difficult because our application really sends keys and it takes over the mouse. But to use it as a joystick, I guess you could write something that but, but then you have to have a, a driver, I guess, in, inside of the kernel or an X driver to have it as a, as a normal device and so that you can do things with it. And I think for Tux Racer there is an implementation where they do it. There is this game where you have to have a ball on top of some wood and you have to do... And that is also implemented with, with the remote and even with the Wii Fit, if I remember correctly, so that you can play that game by, by balancing. It's so these things are already coming, but I don't think it's something that we want to do with our application because it's too limited. Our application does a few things for the purpose we, we intended to, uh, to use it for presentations or controlling mouse and keyboard. And so imagine that we wouldn't do it like this, but uh, some other way, then instead of sending keys, you would probably instruct the program to do something. And that's much more harder. It's, it's much harder because you have to you have to have an, an API for sending events to an application without abusing key, key shortcuts. And I don't think that's always possible. I don't exactly know. Maybe you can do it for GNOME in a certain way and for KT in another way, but it's going to be much harder. Well, indeed, that's that's something I didn't say. Um, I didn't say that, but indeed, uh, what I want to implement is the fact that if you tilt harder, that it goes faster. And on my laptop, it's not a problem because my screen resolution is not that big, but on my big screen, it's, it's implemented the same way. If you go to the left, you get some, um, yeah, you get a number of how much you went to the left, and it just calculates that, and it just, it's just, uh, how you say that, uh, linear. And it probably should not be linear, but it should it should be um, exponential if you go to the left or to the right, so that it, it goes much more rapidly. I think that would be a solution for if you have big screens, like I had yesterday. Um, I also think that we might use the mouse acceleration information from your system to do it, because with your mouse you have the same thing. You have this sensitivity or speed, or sometimes it's called differently. Hmm? Um, I don't know what it means, but I, I believe you. <laughs> sure, but if you if you bring it back, then it should normally stop accelerating. I would think. Uh, 
it should, yeah, of course, yeah, it depends on the impl implementation, I guess. Maybe that's another incident or, or problem story I can do in the future if I implement it wrongly. <laughs> so, yes. Any more ques questions? No questions? Okay, perfect. That ends it. <laughs> Doet hij het al dan? Hallo. Ha! Ik heb geluid. Ik ook. Oké. Okay. Is dit het gedeelte waarbij we gaan uh, uh, rappen? Nee, hè? Nee, dat was een andere conference. Oh, dat was een andere conference, oké. Okay. Ja. Goed. Zo. Het einde. The end. Doe we dit in het Engels of in het Nederlands? I think we should do it in English. English. Considering the audience. Over the audience outside. Hi, audience. French. Half French. Oké. Mijn mes en me. Du pain du vin. It's the end of 
This year is 2009, the fourth yeah. year in a row. The fourth year. So that means next year it's the fifth one. Fifth one. Did, did you ever think we would made it this far? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so ev anyway, everybody, it was very nice to have you all here. It's always a sort of a small um, fest party. Cozy. It's a party. What? Small and cozy. Small and cozy. Yeah, it's the place where experts meet. Right? So, um, thanks for joi uh, joining us. Uh, thanks for showing up. Um, I would, uh, this is also the moment where we go into the commercial mode. So, this is uh, the forward thing and then commercial and then uh, the forward uh, commercial tag. Um, we thank a lot some of our sponsors who made this year's event possible, as in uh, Proxy, uh, ONVZ, my employer, who has uh, donated uh, some money. Uh, uh, ISC also, uh, we're very proud to have them as a sponsor. I mean, what would the internet be without ISC? Hmm? Um, the, the, the Fontes uh, Technical University, where we are always welcome. So it's very nice to uh, have them as a co-sponsor. Of course, the Dutch Linux uh, uh, user group, um, the NLLGG. And uh, of course, City TV for uh, recording and broadcasting uh, our babbles. Yeah, that's, uh, oh yes, sorry, uh, slash uh, and tag uh, commercial. You forget uh, System oh, House. Oh, sorry, uh, System House Mobach. Who could I forget? Yeah, the one without a logo, o only a URL, you know? But it's, hi Fred, sorry. <laughs> um, no, it's in, in the camera. Uh, all people looking behind. Okay, um, so now I'm finished with the commercial part. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to thank all the volunteers who helped today and in preparation. Yes, I think we should call them forward and give them a real big applause for all the work they've done. I agree. Come on, guys. Come on. Everyone in the green Don't shirts. Don't be shy. Didi, come on. Didi, come. He's too modest. Yeah, he needs a bit of encouragement. Because yeah, he's going to help. He's got a hangover from yesterday. That's yeah, also yeah. possible. <laughs> he's going to help next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So can you do the applause again now? They're standing here, please. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, that's about it. We've got some cleaning to do. Yep. Um, and um, you can help. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's welcome to pitch in and help us clean the, 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 the venue, but if you want to go home and go to a train, I mean, I, I won't say I'll understand, but um, there's nothing I can do against it, you know. Lock the doors. Lock the doors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call security immediately. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Me too. Yeah, yes, sure. of course. For everyone who enjoyed this uh, meeting, I want uh, to invite you for the BZ Day we will uh, organize in Utrecht on 12 December. So please be back and enjoy a beautiful day. And of course we hope to see you next year. Yeah, till next year. Bye bye. <laughs>